Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're gonna give you 10 tips for multicam live production. So first things first, quick walkthrough. Uh, there's actually 10 operators on this shoot. I'm gonna be a cam op on this one. You guys all know Dave, my friend Dave. He's directing this one. Um, let's quick little backstory about Dave. We actually met when he was directing a multicam shoot at Staples Center for Hillsong United. Uh, so today we're shooting with Hillsong Worship and uh, a couple cameras we got. We got the C500, got the C70. These will be more like crowd cams. And then the majority of the cameras are actually gonna be reds. So we've got the Monstro, the Helium, the Gemini. Uh, there's even a Komodo there uh, and, a, and a whole bunch of different ones. So. I'll be taking you guys with me. It's kind of going to be a little bit of an informal, uh, kind of like vlog type, but we'll bounce around and we'll see what tips the other crew members have. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm here with Ryan. You guys probably remember him from, from some other videos. Ryan's our first AC on this shoot. Uh, Ryan's job as the first AC is to basically keep everything super organized. Uh, on a, How many cameras do we have today? Uh, we have about 10 cameras. Okay, so with 10 cameras, yeah. you've got tons of batteries, tons of media. Uh, what are some tips you have for people that are doing multi-cam productions with first, a lot of cameras? Yeah, firstly, I would say organization. Organization is like your number one thing that you need. Um, when you're running that many cameras, things just get like jumbled really easily. So having, especially when you're coming in and you're like taking things out of crates and uh, cases and stuff, have each like one have a dedicated spot. Um, that would be my number one tip. To yeah, begin with. <laughs> love it, dude. Good one. So uh, actually, when we first got here, we wheeled my card in. And the vast majority of my stuff has labels on it, but we actually made sure that like every single thing, so every little cable, every magic arm, because when you have like 10 operators, everybody's bringing their stuff, or you have a big rental house that has a lot of stuff too. So it's really easy to get stuff mixed up. So um, great tip, Brian. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so uh, one of the cameras today, like I mentioned earlier, is the C500 Mark II. Uh, it's got the bright tangerine top handle. And then um, what's pretty cool is actually, I shot that little commercial thing with the DZO Pictor zooms. The director, Dave, actually requested to have these back out. So it was cool um, seeing these lenses kind of alongside like the Ingenue lenses and a lot of other like super premium lenses that are costing like $100,000 for one single lens. So that was kind of nice to, to get the request for these to come back out. Um, but one tip I would have is you wanna just double check and triple check all your settings. So a lot of times on multi-camera shoots, the way that they sync all the cameras is really two ways. One, like people are familiar with is, is just putting a scratch audio on the camera. So most cameras can record scratch audio. You wanna make sure your scratch audio is enabled and on track one and two. But the second way is through your time code. So uh, C70, C500 Mark II, most cinema cameras, they can take time code. So what time code does is it basically um, tells your camera to the, like the millisecond what time it is, what time of day it is and all the cameras will get jammed the same time code. So basically, once you get to post-production, all you do is you can sync them up super easily using that. So that's one tip I would have is just make sure that you are gonna use time code. Second tip I would have is just double check all your settings. Uh, you wanna make sure that all the cameras are at the same white balance, same uh, shutter speed, same uh, frame rate, because if like one of the cameras is at 60 frames, the other one's at 24, it's not gonna really work out. So those are the two that I have for this video. All right guys, so I'm here with Dave. He's the director today. He's directing the whole shoot. So basically he'll be communicating through comms to all 10 camera operators. Dave, what are some tips you got for directing multi-cam shoots? One of the tips I've got is really need to communicate to your camera operators beforehand what you want because during the show, um, with 10 cameras, you can really only dedicate 10% of your time to each camera. So what are they doing for the other 90%? They need to know that beforehand. So it's really important that you communicate very clearly what you want from them, what you expect from them. And that might be things like, hey, don't forget to do longer takes because um, you never know when the editor post record wants to cut to you. So you do longer takes, you're not just like, got it, got it, got it, like a highlights guy, you like, got it. Okay, wait for the moment, wait for the moment. Okay, that's a good moment that I just captured then. And then maybe then you can move on. So like a couple of tips is like long takes and um, just communicating very clearly beforehand um, what you want from each camera operator because during the night, it's only like 10% of the time you can dedicate to each camera. Yeah, dope. Yeah. One of the things Dave was saying uh, a little bit earlier in like the, the briefing for all the camera guys was he was basically saying like, it's not about like 
having a selfish shot. It's not about like picking off like the sickest shot and then I'm gonna run over here and have something else that's cool happening on the other side of the stage. It's more about understanding what you want from the director. So for me, I'm just a cam up on this one. So my job is to understand what does Dave want because I'm serving a, a bigger plan here. It's not just about me just crushing it, getting the sickest shots for my reel. It's more about how can I be a good camera operator and be a good team player. So overall, the team can put out something that's better than any one of us could capture individually. Dave's hot tips. So we've got our multi-viewer here. As you can see, only four of the cameras are up at the moment, the other four are off. The other six are off, sorry. So one of the hot tips is keep your information on. See how we've got all that information all around here? Like a lot of people like to fill this, but this way I've got an assistant director. I can, I can see whether their um, cards are getting low. I can see whether their battery is getting low. So if the operator doesn't notice that, the assistant director will be able to notice that and then just send somebody out for either a battery change or I can, or I can communicate to them that, hey, it's time for a battery change and, and we can um, coordinate that a lot easier. Yep, nice one. All right, we got Ben Hess, filmmaker. Uh, he's gonna give us uh, a tip for gimbal operators for multicam shoots. So this is actually my first multicam gimbal shoot, but what I love to do is get these little sprigs right here and they screw into your quarter inch things. And then that keeps your cables tucked because if you're gimbal opping and you get a cable snagged, like that's terrible. Cause then that'll mess up your whole shot. And then you see like one right here, this is keeping these uh, cables nice and coiled up. So that way, like if this was dangling, this could snag somewhere and then boom, you messed up your perfectly smooth shot. So Ben's gimbal tip of the day. <laughs> boom, hot tip. Woo. Oh yeah. All right, so I'm here with my friend Tyler Edwards. You guys obviously know Tyler. Um, he flew out from Colorado for this shoot and Tyler is gonna be a cam op along with myself for yeah. one of the 10 cam ops. And Tyler, what are some tips you have for cam ops on multicam shoots? Number one, if you can, for, for, for music especially, know the songs beforehand, learn the songs. If you know the song, then you can kind of anticipate uh, a riff that's coming up or a part of the song or a bridge or whatever the case may be. And then the other thing is uh, just kind of having like an awareness of, of your surroundings, not only to be, you know, for safety for musicians and stuff, but also just kind of knowing like where the cam ops are so you're not always in another another camera's frame. Boom. Loved it, dude. All right, we got Neil, director, TP, and today he's a camera operator. What's a hot tip you have? Yes, I'm all about the story as we all should be. However, I will say story through movement is what I'm looking for. How am I telling the story through my movement? Is static best, is moving best, and ultimately figuring out what speaks the right language to tell that story. Dope. You got a tip? No, not really. Just okay. show us your rig then. What rig okay. are you on today? Oh, uh, right now, I, I'm rocking a C70 with Hold that thing sideways. the DZO optics, 20 to 55. And uh, yeah, it's gonna pair nicely with this camera right here. Um, we're just gonna be shooting crowds, so I'm excited to uh, film some faces. And crush it, Whew. Thanks, man. Tyler, just finished up the show. How'd you feel, man? It was good. <laughs> this is my rig, so my back is freaking red. Talk us through the rig, what do you got? Um, red Komodo? Got a red Komodo somewhere in there. Well, you drew the short straw. And then What's that lens, dude? This is... Wait, let, me get a, let me get a side profile on this. This is the, uh, the Anjanu Optimo. It's a 14, no, 17 to 80. And uh, this thing's a freaking beast. Yeah, man. And, uh, yeah. The main question everyone wants to know, how's your back feeling? <laughs> Thank you to Easy Rig. It's better than it would normally be without this. But, uh, truth be told, if, if I were to run this without Easy Rig, I would just cradle the thing the whole time. <laughs> He's a beast, man. Look at his hands. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we just finished up, uh, wrapped the show. Everybody's pretty exhausted. Um, I kind of had the easiest job out of everybody. I was just on the dolly, which is super cool. Uh, it was a fun job, but a lot of the guys were on easy rigs. I think we were running maybe three or four easy rigs. Uh, a couple of the guys were on sticks, tripods. Um, there was a jib operator, a crew of two for that. And um, 
Ben had probably the hardest job out of everybody. He's on the gimbal all day, running the Movi with the giant ingenue lens on it and his, his red on there. So anyways, uh, super fun day, super stoked. I think we got some really good stuff. Hopefully, depending on like permissions and um, whether or not I can show anything, I might put a little bit of uh, the show footage in here, but I think for me, I think it came out pretty cool. Uh, great team effort from everybody. I think that's like the biggest lesson I have is on these bigger shoots, the biggest thing is just, you gotta be a great team player because everybody's part of making the overall mission successful. It's not about the individual, it's about the team effort. So uh, if you like this kind of video, consider hitting that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.